Let's hope you are all well. This week, I took a trip to the NEC Toy Fair and I had a blast. I had a real blast. It was really, really good. Went down with Mark at Blue Harvest Toys. Uh, also met up with Lobot. That was an absolute uh, pleasure and an honour. And also Mario White, who you might have seen in the chat sometimes. Fantastic chat, all a lot of them, and we all had a brilliant time as well. And I can't tell you how many people that I bumped into whilst walking out the actual toy fair. Everyone who were coming up to me saying hi, <laughs> you're all legends, you are, you're really, really lovely people. It was nice to, it was a little overwhelming to be honest with you as well. <laughs> a little overwhelming. Anyway, I did go with the intention of filming, and I started, but I ended up having to put the camera away fairly quickly because. Although you can't tell now, I had a bit of an issue with my finger. I must have been sticking it somewhere it didn't belong. And you can just about see on the knuckle there, there's a little cut type thing. Tiny, tiny little dot on the knuckle. It got infected and it swelled right up. And I was unable to hold the camera. It was, it was causing so much pain. It was almost like there was an acorn in there, it had swelled up that much. I, I, I just couldn't hold the camera um, without being in quite a, a lot of severe pain. So I had to put the camera away. And a little later on when I wanted to try again, it had got too busy. There was... It got far too busy and you couldn't walk around the place without having to turn sideways and squeeze through. And, bumping into people, it was a little bit too busy to, to do any filming at that point. So unfortunately I can't do a walk around. I did get a few bits at the beginning of the day where I was just sort of like focusing on individual items that I thought looked cool, so I might inter-slot a few of those here, there and everywhere throughout the video, we'll see. I might just stick them all at the end or I might use them in the opening and closing credits, who knows. <laughs> I'll try and be creative. And here's the first of those cuttings with this real action heroes, Medicom, James Bond figure. Really quite liked these chopper models. They're 112 scale, which means they'll go really well with your Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, or G.I. Joe Classified. Oh, I don't know what this is, never seen it before, but really like that dragon model kit. And there's some other cool ones on this stone as well. Some really nice Japanese imports that tickled my pickle. Real Ghostbusters vintage jigsaw puzzles. Weren't expecting to see them, but such colourful artwork. Very nice. How about some Batman animated stuff for you? Quite like that board game type thing. Cool. And who remembers trolls? <laughs> I remember these being a huge thing back in the day. Should have got that one with CT on its chest, shouldn't I? Cosmic Toys. Um, so, this video is literally going to be a haul video, and it's not a huge haul, not, not by a long joke, it's quite a, it's quite a small one. Now, back in the day, back before I opened the shop, I used to go down to the NEC, I think there were two NEC, what was there one or two NEC time fairs a year back then, it's 18 years ago, it's a long time. And there was also the memorabilia collector's fair, which, oh, I miss the memorabilia, that was amazing. Kind of morphed into Comic-Cons now, and they're not quite the same. But I, I used to have a real real fun time with them. And we, I, it used to be a friend that took me down, and he had a people carrier, so put those seats down, you've got a van. You've got a van. He used to take a trailer as well, and a top box on top of the car. And I used to fill every inch of that vehicle. So imagine my surprise when I came back this week with just this full of stuff. <laughs> I thought I'd be coming back with a car full of stuff, but I didn't. So it's going to be a quick and simple video of what I did pick up. And my first pick up was from, I've mentioned him before at the Bolton videos, Grimble Comics. I picked up this little Ultraman figure from him. I just like the colours. He had a load of vinyl again, you know, like he often does. And I just like the colour of this. I thought it's 
it, it pops quite nicely. As you can probably see on that price label as well, it, it was quite cheap. Quite cheap, eight quid. It's a proper Bandai one, Bandai. 1989, so there's a little bit of vintageness to it as well. Only a slight little bit of paint rub on the tip of the tail and the tip of that spine and the tip of his arm, so it's, it's in pretty good condition overall. Now, I'm not an Ultraman collector or watcher or viewer or whatever, so I don't know who it is, but apparently it is Vakishim or Vakishim, it says on this, um, this label that is very kindly written on to tell us who and what it is so yeah that's gonna find its way into one of these cabinets at some point and here are some of the wonderful kaiju goodies that Grimble Comics also brought along with him lovely Gamera there and always a fan of that Destoroyer lots of Ultraman stuff he had an awful lot of Ultraman stuff on this occasion and as of yet, Ultraman is not something I've ventured into, but yeah, he had some really, really cool pieces. When I say I haven't ventured into Ultraman, I mean actually watching it. Obviously, I've just bought an Ultraman figurine. He also had all these monster in my pockets for sale. Mimps! Two collectors. And a couple of the rare glow in the dark ones there too. Always has a really good selection. Really good selection some nice supernaturals too it, just, it gets all the good stuff it gets all the weird stuff i love my man at grimble comics <laughs> remember check him out on instagram as well if you haven't already now i've no idea what these shogun things are but i thought they looked great and the fact that they're all together in a, a display like that lovely oh vintage corgi juniors dc models look at them still on the card very nice. And this chap nearly came home with me, but I have no idea what he is. I've seen people collecting them, and I think it looks absolutely cool. But I didn't want to throw 75 quid at it just like that. Going in, I was asked what I wanted to be looking for and what I was going to be picking up. And the only thing that I had, there were two things that I had in mind that I wanted to bring home with me, and that was either well a mighty max that i didn't already have so it could go in this cabinet here underneath that lovely sign there that lobot had made for me and i managed to get a mighty max the other thing was one of those really premium items that if i could get it i would but i had a budget of where it was going to be and it really is a pricey one. We're having those Star Wars card backs brought into the shop, those 12 backs. I decided I would like to try and complete a full set of the first 12. Yeah, so it's these carded Star Wars figures that I got in a while ago that I've decided I want to try and build on this collection. Definitely want to complete the first 12. And I may push on past that and try and do the first 20, 21. Let's see how far I can get without bankrupting myself, eh? But I know it's going to be a very, very expensive and long road because I'm not going to be in a rush to do it at those prices. And I'd said to myself that if I could, I would like to get a 12 back. And I saw two from the same seller as well, uh, Space Bridge. I'd also set a limit of a thousand pounds. I'll pay no more than a thousand pounds. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, is that? And Space Bridge, they had two. They had Ben Kenobi, twelve hundred, which puts it outside, a bit beyond my beyond my limit. And they had Darth Vader at eight hundred fifty pounds. And I was very close, very very close. Now the bubble had in recent months apparently had a bit of a crush and there was a ding at the top, a ding at the bottom I didn't mind those, they were fine uh, they're old dings that have been there for a lot of years you can tell so I, I, I was forgiving of those, I would have been quite happy with those but the modern crunch that it had 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 left big thick white marks either side of the blister and a little bit across on the top of one of them as well and it put me off 
it put me off, so I didn't end up buying what I really want. And I thought it was actually a really good price as well at 850. Never thought I'd say that that 850 pounds was a good price for one single carded figure, but knowing what it was, I thought it was okay. It was a Kenner back as well. It wasn't. It was a Palitoy. But then again, I've got a mix of Kenner and Palitoy anyway. So I ended up coming away without a carded Star Wars figure, but at least. I got a Mighty Max and it's the Dino Labs one which is one I've been looking for for a little while. Obviously you get a Triceratops head. Come on camera focus, there we go. Yeah, Triceratops head opens up and his nose horn is the beak of the Pterodactyl. And the volcano in there can open up. Do it where I can see it, there we go can open up to add to play features for the, the playset. There is Max hiding just there with his little gun. I haven't checked yet to see if it's the correct one. I will do. I will do. And then hiding in there. Have I open it? Have I open it? There we go. We've got our mad scientist well, I'm assuming he's bringing the dinosaurs back to life or whatever it is he's doing, experimenting on them. And we've got some kind of a raptor like dinosaur as well. So it's complete. Complete. And it was just at the right side of the price point that I'm looking to pay. Um, these seem to be going an awful lot on eBay for 30 quid. And I thought if I could get it just a touch under, I would have paid 30 quid for it. If, 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 if I get it a touch on it, it'd be brilliant. I got it for 25. That's what it was marked up at, and that's what I got it for. So, excellent. Excellent. So, we're on to a winner already with my two first pickups. Wow. And here we move over to Modeler's Loft, and they brought some absolutely stunning pieces with them. These masters of the universes, all in these lovely acrylic display cases. Now, I don't think they're graded, but they've been put in these cases to preserve them. And don't they look gorgeous? It's nice to see those original Woolworths price labels on there as well. Transformers, they've got some of the rarer ones here. Really, really beautiful displays. It's just everywhere you looked on their stall, it was just premium item after premium item after premium item. Brave Star, it's like you hardly ever find these toys at all, let alone boxed, let alone in such good condition. And just look at some of the other things that they've got there. Oh, it's to die for. This Corgi Batman set, really, really rare. Big Jim, it's just, it's just amazing the stuff that they had with them. They've obviously invested an awful lot of time. Loving this Godaikin Valve Valvilos. I wish I'd have asked a price on that one, actually. And then some of the not so premium, but certainly more interesting lines that they had as well. Really, really cool stuff. The next item I bought, let's see if I can do this, what I want to do, is a birthday present for somebody. And it's not their birthday until September. And he already knows who he is now that I've just said that. Yeah, this is Ed from Vaults of Iacon. It's his birthday in September. And I always struggle to find something that I know that he he would like. Um, that's within budget, since he collects G1 Transformers. And they have to be mint, complete, and fully boxed in a mint box. It tends to put it out of my price range. Anyway, as I was walking around, because he's recently said now he's got everything that he wanted on that kind of line, that he's looking for peripherals. So not necessarily the toys, but other things. So I did manage to pick up one thing, and that's as much as I'm going to show you. You can tell that it's in its box, it's, it is complete, it's in really, really good condition. So that's, that's going to remain a surprise for him. I know that's not very entertaining, so... I won't linger on it too long. Uh, after that, I walked around for a long time without buying anything. And I stumbled across something earlier on, uh, which was this. Now, I, I wouldn't mind building a Valkyrie from um, Robotech. I've actually got a couple 
on order anyway for the shop and it's up for myself as well. And I thought, well, I've got them on order, so I won't bother. And even though I did film this box on his stall, I, I decided not to buy it. Uh, it was marked up at 25 quid, and I thought, I've got some on the way, so what's the point? Anyway, when I did another loop, I had a look, and I'm like, well, I suppose I could build it before the others even turn up. And then it's, I noticed it said, special coating version. I'm like, what's special coating? What's special coating about it? So I, I lifted the lid on the box. They're all chrome parts. <laughs> so there's, there's green, well, teal, teal. There's like a, a silvery black. And there's all the stickers in there to do it up as, um, I think that's a Roy Fokker version. And I thought, you know what? I'm happy with that. <laughs> Quite. That, that's unusual, that's different. Maybe I shouldn't be building it. 1997, so again, it's another vintage type piece now. But I'm like, mm. Now, it doesn't build up the Batroid or the. What's the other version called? The half transformed version? It doesn't build up either of those, it only builds up the plane. Which is right there. And I thought, well, okay, fair enough then. The ones I've got on order, they build up the robot. So at least this will be a little different. Um, so yeah, it's going to get built up at some point, is that? I'm sorry to all you vintage lovers that think vintage stuff should stay, stay as it is. But um, yeah, it's going to get built. Sorry, I'm going to have some fun with it. And just to show that I did indeed film it earlier, and that it was £25, here you go. <laughs> it was on that same stall with the Japanese import model kits. And speaking of Valkyries and Macross and Robotech, this is a very, very nice example of Hasbro's version Jetfire. Robotech, the seats seem to be everywhere this time. <laughs> and there was a nice selection of Starcom on one particular stall as well. Which, that's something you don't see too much of nowadays. Especially not in the boxes like this. Very, very nice. I had to film this. It just seems so weird. I also feel like I've seen it before. Star Trek. Lamp. A table lamp really cool and interesting it's just it's different different i've never seen these particular jigsaw puzzles before uh, many years ago i collected star wars jigsaw puzzles but never seen these ones uh, what else did i buy i think next item i bought it was a little bit of a, a, a bot thing really you know the, 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 the transformer item there's the Valkyrie, I know it's not the robot version, but I'm buying it because in canon it turns into a robot. And then there's this, which I saw it on the start. I thought I was gonna lo I thought I'd lost it. Before I even touched it, I thought I'd lost it. There was someone just ahead of me looking at the stall, and he picked it up just as I clocked it. And I was like, oh. <sighs> never mind. But I hung around. I actually chatted and laughed with him about how terrible this toy looks because it really is a cheap nasty bootleg type item and he put it back down I was like oh he's not buying it and then he walked off fair enough he's had his chance my turn so I, I, I was talking to the, the stall holder and it's, apparently this is out of his own collection and he's had it for 20 odd years or so, and he's decided that he, he, he has to be moved on. So I said, well, how much is it then? He said, 20 pounds. Well, I'm like, 20 pounds for this? It's probably not worth more than that, you know, in the real world, but as bootleg collectors go, 20 quid for something like this is no money at all. And, you see, it does have that little hole in the chest there, because you could plug that into it. Or, you could plug that into it. It does take batteries. I've opened the battery cover so I don't have to try and crack it open on, on camera. And you can see just how clean those battery contacts are. The, 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 the contacts are really, really clean. There's, no, there's nothing there. Now, it has had a battery leak at some point, as you can tell there. 
but it must have been laid on its back when the battery's leaked and the acid hasn't touched the contact it's just gone straight into this little chrome backpack area so the electrics are perfectly fine um, it has removed a little bit of the chrome just just there outside the um, the clip I don't know that. typically because I want to show you it working because he says it does I've got no C size batteries take C size and I've got no C size batteries. I've got double A's, I've got triple A's, I've got nine volts, I've got D size batteries, I've got no C size in the house so I can't show it working. So I can describe what it's supposed to do. It's got two little things there in slots so it's obviously it walks. I imagine it'll walk very very slowly whilst making that old motor noise of it going round part of it there that obviously turns and clicks into that which tells me that those circular saw blades will go around I don't imagine they'll go around very fast but they'll go around and I'm getting that that will act like a kind of claw grabber type thing as it walks forward so yeah pretty cool <laughs> I know it looks cheap, it looks nasty, but that's what I like about it. I'm sure I'll be able to find something to hide it behind in the cabinet. <laughs> and now for another cutting. Who doesn't love my pet monster? And this is the football version. I <laughs> love him. Now this one had an earworm in my head all day long. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Do, 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 do. And now you've got to cope with it. Uh, this guy, uh, Darren, I believe his name is, he's been to my shop a couple of times and he always has a good look at my vintage Star Wars. And I always have a good look at his. You've seen me filming his stuff at Doncaster Toy Fair as well. He always has some amazing, beautiful, clean, minty stuff for sale. Apparently he's going to be setting up online soon, so watch out for him for when that comes about. He said he's going to be trading under the name Senator Collectibles. You know, Senator is in Senator Palpatine. Well, Senator Collectibles, watch out for that. Um, soon, I suppose. Chucky! Can't go to any of these places without finding a Chucky. I used to sell these. They were a pretty good seller, actually, these ones. Wuzzles! I had to catch this on camera. I hardly ever see Wuzzles. And here's one hiding amongst a load of Smurfs, Keepers, My Little Ponies, and Care Bears. Long before the House of Mouse bought Lucasfilm from Mr. Lucas, he had already sold out and he'd allowed them to make these kind of toys, which are pretty cool to be fair, for sale at Star Tours in Disneyland. Some very nice Kenner aliens and Predator from the same seller here as well. Uh, what else did I get? What else did I get? There's not loads. There's not loads at all. Um... I'm, there's one thing I'm leaving for last. The last thing I actually bought was something from my childhood. It's in better condition than mine as a kid ever was. It's a little matchbox car or a van, actually. And it's this Dr. Pepper van. It's in really nice condition. I like that. And I literally only had got this because it took me back. It gives me that little nostalgia kick that so many of us collectors crave and chase. And th there's a little bit of a history to this because when I was a kid, I never knew what Dr. Pepper was. And it says it on there, Dr. Pepper. And obviously now I know what Dr. Pepper is. But when I was a kid, we never had Dr. Pepper on our shelves over here so much. You know, it was mostly Coke or Pepsi. You, ne you never really saw Dr. Pepper. I didn't know what it was. So, because it's Dr. This was my ambulance when I played with toy cars as a kid. This was the ambulance for me. It's a van. It says it's for a doctor. The doctor who rode this ambulance was called Dr. Pepper. <laughs> That's how it worked in my, uh, what, 
four, five year old head at the time. And then one day I saw the advert for Dr. Pepper. Yeah, and I, oh, that's what Dr. Pepper is. Ah, right, okay. I wouldn't mind, it does say racing team on it as well. So I don't know why I thought ambulance, but it, it works for my my um, infantile mind. And it, 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 uh, as soon as I saw this, it took me straight back to that, and it, I remember playing with it as an ambulance. And here's some more vintage Star Wars for you, but look at those droids. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. Some very nice stuff in this cabinet, full stop, to be fair. What's the uh, standard ones there? Very nice. Fortress Maximus, I do believe. Is it Fortress Maximus? I think it is. Japanese version. Very nice. Almost all full of more. Nice. Transformed. Nice to see some Beast Wars. Love the Beast Wars. And some Polly Pocket here. We don't see many boxed ones at all. Now I think I've got these two at the shop ready to sort out. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, these are the party time ones where they're in fancy dress. Love them. Really nice. There's a lot of nice things. <laughs> I bumped into, as I knew I would, I bumped into Nick from Nemo Studios. You know Nick. Legend of a guy. Does some fantastic stuff. Yeah. What's your name? Where'd you come from? <laughs> but a right good day. A right good day. Right. So and we had a good chat because for several months now and um, we've got a behind the scenes we've got a little project on the go and it might now finally be coming to to fruition and i'm looking forward to sharing that with you but for a little while it's going to remain another secret top secret project i suppose but one of his latest releases is gilbert the alien now i remember well gilbert the grot i remember it being called gilbert the grot but yeah gilbert the alien to have one of these but there's a second reason it's not just my nostalgia that made me have to get this but there's the fact that one of my daughters she's gorgeous don't get me wrong she's absolutely gorgeous she's one of my both, well, both of them are gorgeous but one of them pulls this face at some some time she stopped doing it now because i've started calling her gilbert and i've shown her who gilbert is so after many months she stopped doing it but she used to pull this face and it always reminded me of Gilbert the Grot. What do you think? <laughs> see, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I certainly can see it. And I'm, I'm not gonna make a habit of putting pictures of my daughters up on, uh, on, on YouTube. I try to avoid that, but there's a really good reason why I've just done that this time. So yeah, I, I, I had to get Gilbert off him. Uh, I'll be seeing him again at Bolton next week, and I'm going to be coming back with a box full of stuff from him as well. Maybe more. Maybe maybe something I can share with you. Maybe I, maybe something I can't. We'll see. We'll see. This guy just had a really eclectic mix of all sorts of things, and it was actually cool seeing them all side by side like this. Uh, that, that's why I decided to film them. We've got Ewoks colouring book right at the side of Jurassic Park, right beside Spawn, right beside Master of the Universe. It's really, really weird stuff. Terra Hawks, Andy, is that one for you? <laughs> it's a pen. The Alien Queen there, that flying Alien Queen. That's the one that actually caught my attention though. Didn't buy it. Had to get a little footage of this Rosie and Jim Canal book because I've not seen one in donkey's years. And this lady had a really nice selection of Nightmare Before Christmas collectibles. Some really unusual pieces there that you just don't see at all anymore. And the seller who sold me the next item you are going to see had this lovely skateboard. 
And the last thing that I bought, and I, I can already hear Mark, the Harvest Mark, screaming at the camera, but I wouldn't let you have one of those cheaper. I offered you one cheaper, and yes, you did. You offered me one at a very good price, with some extra freebie type stuff as well. But I told you I wanted to build it, and the one that you had was already built. Now, I managed to get a, um, a, a good deal off this one from... Um, Cheltenham Toys and Retro, I believe they're called. You can find them on Instagram. They get loads of cool stuff in. And we had a chat because apparently he's watched the channel a few times. And I got a Zoids Godulus. Or God Zoidzilla, if you like. As we used to call him back in the day. And this one. Still sealed. Still sealed. Still sealed. So. I can build it! <laughs> and yeah, it, it was more expensive than the one that Mark offered me. Um, the, the, Mark offered me one for 100 quid. Complete. Uh, a couple of other smaller ones would have been thrown in with it at that price. And it is a good price, and he ended up getting 175 quid for it on eBay, so well done, Mark. Um, yeah, very very well done. But when I saw this, and I asked about it, and he said it was sealed, and he had it put 180, so it's a lot more than what I could have got off Mark for, and more than what he sold it for in the end as well. But when he said it was sealed, Still don't want to spend 180 on it, so he, he, he said, "Look, I can, I can do your deal." And we ended up settling on 150. Um, I'm looking forward to building it, and I got this out of my birthday money. I combined the money from from my mum and my other half. Still got a little bit left, and it bought me bought me this. In fact, I couldn't actually. It'd be closer to say that I got the money off my mum and my other half's mum bought this so still got money off my other half to spend I don't know what I'm gonna get with that I'll have to have to have a little uh, look online later maybe maybe I'll buy some mighty max stuff I don't, who knows maybe I'll get some at Bolton maybe I'll get some at Bolton I was planning on spending it all at at the NEC but yeah and that just it, it wasn't that there wasn't anything good to buy at the NEC there was I got a bit sick of bumping into people, you know, just trying to get squeezed past because it got really, really busy as soon as they opened the doors at half ten. Uh, I was planning on hanging around a bit longer, but it, it was just too busy. You, you couldn't move. You couldn't get to the stalls at one point. You were literally just weaving your way through and bumping into a load of people whilst trying to complete a circuit of going round. It, the, the enjoyment was sapped out of it by that point. I couldn't get to the toys. I couldn't get to the toys! So yeah, um, the, the, the few things that I did see, I saw a couple of um, early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, uh, Dalek model kits that had never been built, a TV one and a movie one, uh, they were 90 quid each and I couldn't have come away with just one. If I'd have got them, I would have had to get both. That's, that would have been 180 quid on two model kits that I know I'm never going to build. <sighs> So uh, I didn't buy them. Maybe I should have done. <sighs> Where would you sit on something like that? Would, would you buy a model kit for a lot of money that you know you're never going to build? Or would you rather put the money towards something that you know you're going to use? You know, or, or, or display better? Because you, you can't display sprues, can you? You know, the plastic parts on a, on a kit, so it would just be the box. You could print the picture off of the box and stick it in a frame, couldn't you, if you really wanted to. So that, that's what puts me off spending so much money on a model kit that I know I'm not going to build. I don't mind if I know I will build it, like with the, the, the Zoid. I, I know I'm going to build that, but I, I weren't going to build these Daleks. What would you have done? Would you have bought them? Would you have bought them anyway? Should I buy them next time I see them? If I see them again, if they haven't already gone. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what should I do what should I do <sighs> anyway the, 
I've already told you uh, we, we bumped into, well we didn't bump into, we, we met up with Lobot and Mario and the night before we went to the toy fair we, we stayed over at the hotel, we had a few drinks in the bar and Lobot, the, the, the astounding gent that he is, had brought me a couple of little poly bags, one for me and one for Andy at Excelsior's Domain. Now apparently these have been lying around in his drawer for a while and he doesn't even know where he got them from. But there was a little Mighty Max and one of the bad guys from, well it's the bad guy from the Mighty Max Money to set, which is, it's the shark one. I can't show you it because of where it is in the cabinet, but it's the shark one. And yeah, uh, there were spares that he didn't have. He doesn't collect Mighty Max, so he doesn't know why he had them. So he brought them and gave them to me as a gift. Thank you very much, Lobot. Supports me and this channel in far too many ways. And so having finished recording this video and actually getting around to moving things and putting them away, I decided to have a good look at this wonderful little Mighty Max playset. And yeah, I'm really thrilled with it. I'm really over the moon. But I did find that it was including the wrong Max figure. Sadly... The one that came with it was the wrong one. But it turned out that I had the correct one. Thank you, Lobot. You are an absolute legend, sir. What are the odds of being given the correct figure for the toy I'm going to buy the night before I buy it? And then for Andy, he had a couple. Let's take them out so you can see. Take them out so you can see. Couple of these missiles. They're for you, Andy. They are for one of your poppy Battle of the Planets diecast models, or so I believe. But he said he already had two, so he didn't need these two. So they're for you, sir. Uh, I don't know if you'll know about this through watching this, or whether you will have already found out via the Cosmic Council on Wednesday but there we go so that, that's everything that I came back with on my experience my adventure to the NEC that is everything yeah that is everything I've got nothing left to show you what's, what's, what's your favourite out of my pickups is it this is it this is it this <laughs> Mine, I think it has to be said, is this. I think, I think that's probably my favourite, and I suppose it should be considering the price. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I've, I've been wanting to build a Zoid for quite a while now. I'd like to build a Zoid to Zoidzilla. But I don't know if I can bring myself to to do that because that one is a, a, a real vintage piece, and I had one for the longest time, and it was it's still everything's still sealed in the baggies. The box had some damage, so I could have e easily built that one, but I must have had that for eight years, and I never built it because I didn't want to build something vintage. Well. 20 years have gone on since then, so it's even more vintage now. So I don't know if I could ever bring myself to it. Tommy, I know you're not listening to me, but please reissue some of those Zoids 2 toys. We're waiting for them. We'll build them. We need them. <laughs> right, that's all I've got to say, really. Um, catch you again another time. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to, well, yeah, do that. Do that. Oh yeah. Do that. Cheers guys. Take care. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye bye.